assuming this is gonna work. Let's see. No, no. Okay. So, how many educators do we have in the audience? Raise your hands up, don't be shy. Okay, how many of you want to to do something with education programs and are just looking for, oh, wonderful, excellent. So we have some new, new people here in the crowd. So when we talk about the Wikipedia education program, we talk not only about one thing. It's something that happens worldwide in a bunch of countries with various very cool people who donate mostly their time to do various kinds of projects, various kinds of collaborations. So these awesome details that you see here are a result of a long campaign that was done uh, by the Wiki Education team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Ty, the head of that team, is right here. Just raise your So if you have any questions, you can talk to him. <laughs> yes, we have to thank Anna, um, who, who actually um, did a lot of the legwork, so to speak. Um, and this brought us to a point where for the first time ever, we have some kind of a view. Yeah, it's not a perfect view of everything that's happening, because if you think about it for a moment, it's impossible to know everything that has happened um, back to 2005, which is the first, the beginning of a, a, a sort of education program um, that we know of. There are some educators that do stuff with Wikipedia that we don't know about, that don't collaborate with us, that work independently. So it, is, it will always be this black hole part <laughs> that we don't know of. But this gave us a picture for the first time, or some sort of picture of what's happening worldwide. And I think that's quite amazing uh, to think that we have 91 countries participating in the education program or having some kind of education activity in their own country. 50, 539 cities, more than 50 languages. Um, you can see the quite amazing amount of articles written, bytes, etc. All the data is here for the nitty picky Wikipedians who have all the details, uh, who like to have all the details. Um, one thing that I really thought is interesting is the amount of articles, um, not expanded, but new articles, right? I would have expected it to be the opposite, but this review gave us a different idea of what's happening worldwide. And why am I blabbering at 4.30 <laughs> on a Saturday about this? Uh, because I want to talk a bit about what the most um, common collaboration models are. And as of now, as of today, both from information that's gathered by our movement and research papers, academic papers that actually research Wikipedia in education, there aren't many. There are lots of research about students using Wikipedia, but not a lot of research done about how Wikipedia is implemented. So what we do have suggests that there are two primary models. Most of them are taking an article and expanding it, and the second is creating a new article. In both of them, it could be by tra translating material, okay? Other than these two, we have all sorts of collaborations, and people who have been to the User Digest earlier, um, Philip and Esther gave some kind of tasting of the different collaborations happening. It could be with Wiktionary, it could be with Wikibooks, it could be on Commons, there are all types of collaborations. We do, running a program is just not just one thing, but these are the common things as of now. And what we usually have, at least I can speak from my experience in Israel, we call it, by the way, Wikidemic papers. Um, teachers in a, an academic course giving their students an assignment to write a wiki article instead of just an academic paper that only the person who wrote it and uh, the, the teacher can see. So if we're lucky, we have in these constellations one to two sessions with the students. The educators among you will know that this is not a lot, especially not if you 
want to really tap into the potential of working with Wikipedia. And Wikipedia as a pedagogical platform, as a teaching tool, has such a great potential that has been recognized all over the world <laughs> by both, um, and we have a lot of research. Wikipedia is one of, um, in terms of education, it's considered one of the Web 2 tools. Do, uh, do you know what Web 2 tools are? Okay, so for those who don't, um, when the web just started, it was basically pages that connected to one another, okay? Uh, a page could link to another page, but the user couldn't do anything. It could just, we could just read, right? Or click to, an, to another link. The web too are platforms on the internet that allow the users to be part of the creation of the knowledge. And we have lots of platforms like this. Which ones do you know? Wikipedia, one, yeah, what else? Facebook, thank you. Facebook, Twitter, anything, any kind of blog, anything that we can react, create content, yeah, give some feedback from the user side is called Web2. Research, academic research in the realm of higher education and also any type of, using of usage of Wikipedia, um, it's been researched quite a lot, quite extensively for the past 20 years. And there's quite a um, consensus among educators and researchers that out of all the Web2 tools available, Wikipedia is the one that has the most potential to, as you can see, do all sorts of things. And some of the things we would like to do using Wikipedia is help our students gain more digital literacy. Yeah, getting better at just assessing information, searching for stuff, finding stuff on the internet. Um, academic literacy. Do you know, have you heard of it? Who knows what academic literacy is? So this will have to be assessing sources and being able to actually uh, combine two sources together to create a coherent picture. So these are the sorts of skills that we're talking about here. Writing skills, of course, how to create content in a constructive, in a, in a, in a quite a um, very clear um, module or flow. Um, these are academic skills that everyone who studies, any student need. We need critical thinking skills, right? And of course, everybody talks about collaborative skills today. We want to be able to create things together, but that actually means we need to teach people how to do that. How do we collaborate? How do we give feedback and receive feedback? Tricky, right? Any Wikipedian or any educator would agree that you actually need to give people these tools or talk about it. And um, I think it was Esther today that mentioned that uh, we see a shift from you know, the sage on the stage, the teacher who's up there on the podium teaching, giving his knowledge to the students. And we see for at least a decade, highly, <laughs> for at least a decade now, we see a shift, uh, a change in the way we want to work with students. We know it's, it doesn't work anymore. With the digital age and stuff being online, students today can find information quicker than ever. So that means that the shift has to become different. Uh, it's not about the information, it's about giving skills to students to find information, to assess information, to work with information, to share this information, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's really been about not having a passive audience just sitting like that, hearing me out, which is what I hate. Um, and going to, other models like case-based learning, project learning, team-based learning, all the BLs, yes, CBLs, TBLs. All the educators will know these. Um, and it works, yeah, we want active learning. We want people to be engaged because educators also know that the younger generation really votes with his feet, so to speak. They simply stop coming to lectures. We have empty hallways of you know, empty classrooms. So educators understand they need to engage differently with the, this new generation. And so we want active learning. We want 
engaged learners and we want to have an impactful experience and a positive learning experience for students. The amazing thing is Wikipedia allows us to do all of these things. How amazing is that? So no wonder then that a growing amount of educators worldwide are experimenting with Wikipedia in the classroom. Many, many, many different people around the world, you saw the numbers in the first slide, are trying to do stuff. But there is a but, right? You expected my but. And the but is, or our challenge as a community, is that yes, a lot has happened, but in a way, we're still at the very beginning of actually knowing how to really correctly or what is the best way to incorporate Wikipedia into the curriculum. What works? What doesn't work? We are all experiencing, we are, uh, there are a lot of people here in the audience, I think half of you are doing stuff, right? Half of you raise your hand when I ask, do you engage in the classroom? And you said yes. So all types of uh, things are happening, but we are still at the very beginning of really tapping into how to do it. Uh, and there's no just one way because as I said at the beginning, working with Wikipedia has so many different things that we can do. So there's no recipe, not one at least. And what we also lack is research um, about what's working and what's not, academic research. Um, I've been to the research uh, at the first day that there was a research session. Anybody else was there? Nobody? Oh, yeah, two people. <laughs> so they talked about the different kinds of research connected to Wikipedia that there is, that, that does exist. So we have lots of stuff going on about the gender gap, which is amazing. Lots of stuff about how Wikipedia is used by students or faculty, but not really on how to really implement that, right? How to really do it in classroom. So we lack research, we lack really good best practices. We're still at the beginning of exploring, which is, I think, exciting. That's wonderful. As a global community, we're really in a, uh, such a wonderful place to try things and to see what, hap what, what works. And when everybody tells me about a project that they did, that they say to me, they failed. It didn't work. It was awful. It's just nothing like what they expected. I say to them, wonderful. What did you learn from it? How are you going to change it for the next time you're going to run the program? So all of these things that I just blabbed about made me as an educator, and I've been experimenting with teaching with Wikipedia since 2001, 2011, sorry. Um, so in 2013, I was quite frustrated with the fact that I have so little time with students, and I felt that in two sessions, there really is no way I can give all the, the knowledge that I need all the skills that I can do the process that I want them to go through to actually you know, gain skills and change something and have an impactful experience, which is all I want, um, with two sessions being like a guest lecturer in a course. So I created a course. <laughs> I created the first, it's called Wikimed. I run it at Sackler School of Medicine, which is where I work. Uh, that's my paying job is there. Uh, not not with the Israeli kids that I taught. I work at the American program, uh, but they gave me, because they knew me, uh, they, <laughs> and I was really at the right place at the right time, they allowed me to open an elective course for medical Israeli students. Um, and it was a semester-long course that tried to incorporate everything that I've talked about so far. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was great. These are my students. By the way, these are the first class of uh, Wikimed course. Since then, um, the course had three iterations so far. I'm going to open the fourth one uh, in the coming academic year. My students wrote so far about 170 articles, plus minus in Hebrew Wikipedia together. Um, they got over three million page views, which is amazing. All the, the, uh, only the material that the first class um, wrote, there were 62 students who graduated, um, got, I think, over a, a million and a half page views, which is amazing. Um, and talking about impact, yeah? So this is impact, and this is something that the students also love because they love the idea of 
doing something that other people can see, feeling that they actually contribute something to back to the community, especially medical students. And for medical students, it's, I mean, it's important in, in many, many other ways. Uh, I'm not going to get into, a, into, into specifically that. If you're curious about specifically Wikimed, talk to me after. Uh, I do want to say that next year, um, the Life Sciences faculty approved the course. You see that the, there is a big stamp of approved because, of course, the syllabus that I created went to a, an academic uh, committee that had to decide if this is, you know, good enough for, the, <laughs> for med school. And yes, they approved it. And this year, the Life Sciences faculty approved it as well, which is very cool. So we're going to expand. We're going to have some new people coming to the course as well. And another thing happened in, I mean, during this year, we managed to, to, how shall I put it, to um, persuade, that's a good word, we managed to persuade a rector um, that sees the whole university, not only the specific faculty of medicine, um, that such a course is important for all students. So today, I took the model of Wikimed, which has been adjusted every, with every iteration and created it for the whole campus, not only specifically for medicine, but every student, every undergraduate student today at Tel Aviv University can take a Wikipedia course. And it was amazing. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect because all my experience was specifically with medicine, but I wanted to experiment and see if it can work with students in the same class from different disciplines. And it did work. It was an amazing course and we're going to continue next year. And this also led to another educational institution in Israel that has asked me to advise on how to implement Wikipedia in their organization. So that's quite amazing. And you know, most of us beginning, and since half of you are, are about to start programs, hopefully, um, <laughs> the work usually starts from below. Right? We find an educator that is interested or we somehow manage to persuade someone that this is good, good enough to invest in. And we start from below. So talk about yeah, bottom-up and top-down approaches. Everything works. Whatever you can do works. I can say that the top-down uh, top approach works. Um, Wikimedia Israel also have quite an amazing collaboration with the Ministry of Education so when you work in this kind of scale, things are quite different and you need to be adjusted to your, you need to adjust your work accordingly. Hello and welcome. Um, so this whole idea of advising, being in a spot of advising an institution how to implement Wikipedia, yeah, sitting with all the, imagine the meeting, yeah, sitting with the president of the, uh, this um, academic institution, all the rectors, the director, all the deans of the different faculties, and start a conversation there, and then let it <laughs> let it be um, implemented to lower levels. So I'm not the only one who had such experiences on higher level. So you can talk to I think Philip is here. Philip is here. Hi, Philip. So, uh, Philip from Serbia also had experience working with um, um, training a bunch of teachers together. So, if you're interested in that type of thing, you can either talk to him or you can talk to. Can you stand up? Hello. Yes, yes. Hi. So, Shai <coughs> is uh, from Wikimedia as well. She's responsible for all the training and stuff. So, if, you're, if you want to delve into something, talk to her. Um, so this whole bottom-up, top-down got me thinking, in general, about the future of education. Where do we want to take it? If we have like a, how did, the, I think Lydia called it the pony today. We, ha we were in a Wikidata session and she said, well, tell us your wishes. Tell us, I want a pony, yeah? So we called it the pony. So this is the pony part. Um, and what I did is basically put up a bunch of questions on the board, and this is the part where you jump into the conversation, hopefully, and help me think about these things. And if we can 
um, maybe agree on things that we would like uh, to happen in the coming year or two years and come out of this session with a bunch of things that I haven't thought about, then that would be amazing. So the first thing I want to ask you, <laughs> um, the idea of having a wiki advisor and the idea which is the name I gave my session, yeah? How, imagine a world where every student who goes to school goes through a wiki course. So that raises a lot of questions. One of them, should it be mandatory, right? Our work as volunteers is volunteering. We choose to do it. When you bring it to the classroom, there's always a question of, well, we kind of forced them to do it for a grade. So what do you think? What are your thoughts about making it mandatory or elective? I would love your thoughts on it. Anyone? Just feel free to, to speak up. Yeah. I would say totally elective. Totally elective. Who agrees? Agrees. Who thinks it should be mandatory? Because it's one of the things that we need to actually, these are skills that we have to give students to, you know, to thrive in the 21st century. So there are a few of you. Yeah. So just to make sure this is recorded, because only I, apparently only my voice is recorded through the mic, I'm going to repeat what Shai said, which I completely agree with. It kind of depends, like different wiki projects that we run um, in academia or in education in general, it depends on the um, level of the students. Obviously, things that we do at university level or skills that we want to give students at the university levels are quite different than the ones we want them to have when they are in elementary school, right? And we've done stuff with elementary school kids as well. You'll be surprised, but um, you might have been surprised, I don't know. But kids today, even in fourth grade and fifth grade, are being taught to go to Wikipedia to summarize stuff, let's say, or to find information about something, right? So even from a fifth grade, approach, we need to give them skills of how our platform works. Most of them use Wikipedia, but they know nothing about talk pages. They know nothing about previous right, versions of the article. They don't know how the platform works, how um, things are monitored. They don't know anything about copyrights. So teaching them to be better consumers of knowledge is definitely something we can do on a more basic level with students. When they grow up, as Shai said, we can give them more things to do. We can make them join the information culture by creating information themselves, being part of this knowledge area, um, knowledge um, age, right? So you see that um, the audience was quite conflicted some think it should be mandatory, some think it should be um, elective. elective. But all of you agree that they need to be taught it in some form or, or another, which is quite cool. Um, and what is the price that we have to pay as a community? Because there is a price, right? Um, <coughs> especially for smaller Wikipedias, when we have instantly a bunch of newcomers entering the, the space and starting editing, it can create a lot of work for the veterans, the, those, who, the, those volunteers who actually run the project. So we have to be mindful and thoughtful about how to do it without, with the minimum effect on the community. So, because there is always a price. Um, should we lower standards? I would say no, but I wanna hear what you say, so. Do we all agree that we don't need to lower the expectations on articles? Yeah, yeah Lee? I would say no, and as a matter of fact, I have found that students working on Wikipedia articles actually raise the quality of what they produce vis-a-vis -vis an assignment that is just, that I'm, I'm the only person who's gonna look at it. Okay. Anyone else wanna comment on that? Yeah? Uh, I also think it relates to what you said before about the 
different forms. It's not about like lowering the lever, but rather uh, if you want the right assignment, find the right assignment and right. more basic level for the lower Please. grade students, and then in high school and the university uh, hire them. Yes, thank you for that. I think that's such an important point. You know, uh, I've talked about the fact at the beginning that the two most common uses are expanding an article and writing a new one, but it shouldn't really be like that because some students are simply not ready and we need to find small things for them at the beginning to do, like correct mistakes, add a link, add a reference, summarize, take an article that you found on Google Scholar, summarize the ideas, especially if those articles are behind paywall. They would do such a great service to humanity by summarizing the article and somehow implementing it into Wikipedia, which goes to the exact skills that we want them to have, like converging information from different sources into one coherent picture. So we can do, we can, on lower levels, we can have them take pictures of heritage places where they live and expand articles, which has been done by some of us here. Yeah, <laughs> Wikimedia, uh, Sweden is here, and they have been doing cool stuff with um, students um, and we're, we have to wrap up, so I just want to very quickly um, go through the other point just so we think about it together. Um, from the institution's perspective, we have to think how we talk to them in terms of should it be mandatory, should it be an elective. Um, and to justify it academically wise, which we have so much uh, to show for, we have so much research that we can show them um, that I don't think really it's Today, it's, it's a real issue. The third thing that I wanted to raise, is just, you know, be bold. <laughs> Experiment with different uh, facets of doing it. Um, this is not the only way of doing a semester long course. It's just one option. There are middle options between one and two session and a semester long uh, course. You can experiment with those, and lastly, scalability, which is a question we also always have to ask ourselves, and not only with Wikipedia, right, with all the other wiki projects, and we do need more research. So, um, when we imagine the future together, these bullets are for you guys. We do need te technical tools, but this is what I want to get at. So, if we can imagine together, <laughs> the future of Wikipedia in education. What would you like to see? What type of collaborations would you want your children to have? So this is what I want to leave you with. And I'm gonna, I think if someone can open um, maybe something on uh, an ether pad, we can continue the conversation there because we have to wrap up, um, unfortunately. And I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for your listening.